Hey everybody, Todd here from the Quad City Times and the Dispatch Argus. I am here with the incomparable Linda Cook. <laughs> you know which way you're pointing, even when we're not together. I love that. I'm with him. You're, I'm with you're, him. you're here on my screen, but you're there in reality. Right, so. right. Uh, so um, we've got three movies to talk about. Uh, sh the short story of The Long Road. Uh-huh. Artemis Fowl. Our history of The Long Road. I think I told you wrong, but that's what it's called. Oh, I'll have to correct the description underneath. Oh, anyway, and then uh, Artemis Fowl and the Apostle, and I will talk about the first uh, episode of HBO's Perry Mason. Yeah, so, Linda, hit it. What do we got? Uh, well, um, the short history of the Long Road is another one of those little, little movies about people living on the fringes. Um, it's about. Um, a girl, uh, a, a young woman who travels all over with her dad. And that's just how they live. In other words, he's homeschooled her. They have never stayed in one place for very long. A little petty thievery is involved with their survival. And they he drives them around in this old um, van or a, an RV, a camper, really. It sounds like you're talking about Paper Moon. Well... Kind of, it has that feel. It, I'm so okay. glad you brought that up. It has that same feel. So there's a disaster. And this girl ends up by herself and living by her wits. Um, they always have been squatters. They look for uh, homes that are uh, the two of them. That it, it starts out really cool with a really nice, just a scene. You'll, you'll appreciate this as a, as a photographer. Uh, uh, a luxurious dip in a pool until you realize that that's not their pool and they don't live uh. in the house and this house is in foreclosure. You can tell this is something they're used to doing. So as they take off down the road, he teaches her things and she reads avidly, both very intelligent people. But until this crisis occurs, everything is okay, except you can tell that this young, young woman is wanting some roots somewhere, wanting to sink, you know, to stay somewhere. And what I really liked about this movie, and the, really the big star, is Danny Trejo. And Danny Trejo is very recognizable from Quentin Tarantino movies and Machete, mm -hmm. that's his character, and he's just been in a lot of stuff. He plays a, a, a he has a body shop, and he plays a kindly fellow who hires her because when the van breaks down, what's she going to do? Where's she going to go? And it's about an unlikely friendship that they strike up. And I will tell you that she is searching for someone. And it's about her journey of discovery and her search for roots of some kind. I really like this movie. I like its gentle tone. It is never a mean spirited. It doesn't have a mean bone in its body, as it were. Never mean spirited. Never cruel. And it's a movie you could watch with older kids and talk about cool. family. What really is a family, and what what does it mean to put down roots? Why is that important? And I, I just thought this is a great little movie. It's streaming right now on various cool. platforms. Cool. Cool. cool, excellent. Uh, Artemis Fall. That sounds familiar, but I don't know what it is. Let me refresh your memory from about a year ago. If you were at the theater, you started to see trailers for Disney's kind of answer to Harry Potter, Artemis Fowl. And oh. this movie was supposed to be released in theaters this year. And it went through some, there was some, it's going to be here. No, it's going to be there. No, it's going to be now. And suddenly here it is on Disney Plus, right? It's not in the big auditoriums because nothing new is in the big auditoriums now. Well, somewhere... Disney executives are breathing a sigh of relief because had this landed in the theaters, it would have landed with a resounding thud. This is one of the worst movies I've seen all year. Judy Dench went from Cats, with an appalling oh. film, I know, to a, a role in this as sort of a, a fairy commander. Now here's what happened. This is based on a series of books on the first two 
but it really takes all the charm out of the character. Artemis Bell is a young prodigy. He's supposed to be a criminal mastermind. His father, played by Colin Farrell, travels all over the world collecting antiquities, these odd paranormal based things. And he tells his son stories of the supernatural and all these creatures such as trolls and elves. Turns out he's not just telling stories, there really is another universe below the surface of the earth. And when the father is kidnapped, then Artemis has to go save him. This is a CGI mess. It's a lot of stuff going on, things flying around, creatures abound, environments abound, but there's very little story. It is so boring. Much, there's a lot going on, but nothing going on. And Disney- Which is worse? Which is worse? The, Pardon? The gold venture that, which is worse? Oh. The gold wow, that's a tough one. This is awful in its own way. And there's a, a, a character played by Josh Gad in this that looks like Hagrid in, um, in the Harry Potter movies. It's such a mm -hmm. ripoff. They made this into a ripoff of Harry Potter when the, move, the series of books really wasn't. So I was just appalled by this movie. I gave it one star and my review hasn't run yet, but it will soon. I'm, it's really, really disappointing. Now, if you wanted to keep your kids entertained for a while, it's 95 minutes long. And I suppose they might like the looks of the, you know, the fairy world and the trolls and whatnot. But, oh my gosh, this is really bad. And it's bad. it's goldfinch bad, where it's too bad to laugh at. Yeah, that yeah. means I'm not I, I'm not going against you ever again. I'm never I'm never doing that. I got my hit list on the refrigerator, and it's like Linda says, "Don't see this." And Thank you. I made the mistake with the goldfinch, just thinking, "Eh, it's in the red box. Why not?" And uh -huh. never again. It was two you and a half hours of my life I'll never get back. Have you seen cats yet? No, and I'm not going to. Okay. Okay. I'm not, I'm not, not even if it's a drinking game. Well, you, I was going to say you could do a drinking game with cats and that might be fun, but this, oh, all right. yeah, this is just, sometimes movies are, are bad and this is, yeah. one of them. John it's Blunk a, says hello, Linda. Oh, and tell him, oh, John, hi. And uh, Tammy Rundle says that you're her go-to critic. Oh, so, she's my go-to filmmaker. So she will not be seeing um, Artemis Fowl. Okay, well, at least you don't have to go to the theater to see it, right? Yeah. I mean, it could be worse. This is the platform where it belongs, certainly. That's right. It belongs anywhere, not on the big screen. So right. I'm glad Disney didn't go back to the theaters and open with this movie. Okay, so is uh, is the um, Apostle any good? Yes. Um, for, for people who like really dark, disturbing stuff, this is a, about a fellow who goes in search of his sister who's being held for ransom by a, a cult-like uh, group of people, sort of a religion, sort of a spirituality. And its first cousin is a movie from the 70s, I think, called The Wicker Man. There was a really oh. bad remake of that done with Nicolas Cage, but the first one was good. And it's about how this, this sibling tries to find his sister, and in doing so, unearths this bizarre secret of this cult. Um, if you like dark, um, suspenseful movies, and there's there's a, certainly a fantasy element and a horror element to this, you will like this. It is, is directed by Gareth Evans, and Mr. Evans generally has a lot of violence in his movies, and this is uh, no exception to his rule. Uh, so it's not for the kids. It's not for the faint of heart, but if you like things that really kind of gnaw at your soul and your brain, you'll appreciate Apostle, which is on Netflix right now. now speaking of suspenseful, I finally got a chance to see Invisible Man. Oh! Really good. Isn't really, it I, good? I, I really enjoyed it. I, I Elizabeth Moss was was excellent uh, and the, in the process of going mad and then uh, writing herself. Uh, it's a great ending. Um, I mean, it's, I didn't see it coming. I didn't, I didn't see, I thought, I thought something was coming, but I didn't see that coming. I didn't um, I really enjoyed it. Enjoyed the yeah, it's, it's in, it's in, um, 
it's on in Redbox. You could rent it for a dollar. So anybody who's out there who's looking for something to grab from the Redbox, I would recommend uh, Invisible Man. I like that there's, a, there's an underlying kind of social commentary, too, on that about how people don't always believe women who say oh, they Oh, absolutely. And I liked that. I thought it was very contemporary and, and just well done. Yeah, the yeah, thing I, I turned to my wife and said, pause for a second. What? How is it that these people she's trusted and have helped her, one thing happens and then all of a sudden she's crazy? Mm -hmm. So it's like, wait a minute. How did, how did I mean, but it's more of a, I mean, I, I don't know that it would have happened exactly like that if, if someone were able to be invisible. But I think that the idea that in general, uh, you have to have video evidence of an invisible man uh, that's abusing you uh, to Apparently. get somebody to pay attention. I mean, that's just there. There's no two ways about it. I mean, you're there, right about there, women not. There's being a real abused. shocking scene in it uh, in a restaurant, and it just oh my god, me out of my seat. Yes. So my wife wanted to rewind to see if she saw the whole thing. I got up to go to the bathroom real quick. <laughs> well, she rewatched it and sat back down because I caught the whole thing. Wow. Um, so I watched last night uh, Perry Mason. Now, Perry Mason, to a lot of people who are watching, is, you know, Raymond, uh, the, Burr, right? Raymond Burr and a, a lawyer show. Um, but this version of Perry Mason is kind of the origin story. Uh, he's a detective in 1930s uh, Los Angeles. Um the, the scenery is cool. That's very noir. It's, I mean, the first, I think the first three minutes you don't catch anybody's face. It's just hats and light. Um, oh, cool. You said you like yeah, fedoras. So, so I love fedoras. Fedora. That's what I texted you last night. It's got fedoras. I, yeah. I love it. But um, it is uh, essentially, now I have, of course, if anybody who's watched The Americans, uh, I've forgotten his name already. The lead actor from the Americans, um, the, the TV show, um, he plays Perry Mason and, uh, he's kind of down on his luck. He's uh, post-World War one. He's a veteran. Um, he's living on his family's, um, uh, dairy farm that is falling into disrepair. I think he's only got two cows left and he's living next to, and then it's, there's an airfield adjacent to his, his, uh, to his dairy farm, but essentially he gets brought in by John Lithgow, who's a lawyer, to investigate the the, the brutal murder of uh, one-year-old Charlie Dotson. Ooh, ooh. Um, and and it's it one of the great. They show it in the trailer where they um, uh, the the coroner says to Perry Mason, uh, "It's one of the when the." the the child is on the, the slab and you don't actually see the child on the slab, but you, it's very suspenseful in the sense that you think that the director is about to show you. Um, the idea he's, he says, uh, it's one of the most horrific things you've ever, you're ever going to see. And then Mason looks at him and says, what do you know that I've seen? Meaning no, as a, not. as a veteran, right. World War one, whatever's on that slab, may be shocking, but to make the generality that this is the worst is probably a, a bridge too far. I like, um, I like that idea of bringing home again the horror that the First World War was. Right. It's kind of been a theme for us on these shows. Um, yeah. So it's it's really well done. It's really well acted. Uh, they don't give away too much. Um, one of the main characters is... Uh, I cannot, I will mispronounce her name. So I'll just say the, the lead actress from Orphan Black, which was a BBC America show, which was brilliant. And anybody who's looking for something just to just bomb through a stream, Orphan Black is one of the great science fiction television programs of all time. It was very just popular. very, and it was brilliant. It was just women empowerment. Brilliant. I mean, it, I loved it. I, um, but anyway, so she, Tali Muscle, I never mind. And anyway, she, um, she's going to come in. She's only appeared in photographs so far in episode one, but she seems to be the lead in a church. And um, Mason is hired by a, a, a rich benefactor of the church to find out who killed um, this child. So 
Uh, he's kind of starting to, you know, he kind of comes up with an idea at the end of the episode of when he lays out all these papers after a bender, um, how he, some piece may be falling together for him. So it was a good uh, job of, of leaving us in suspense to want to see more. Yeah, nice and, segue to that next piece. Yeah, and so the idea that, you know, that HBO, like Game of Thrones or The Sopranos or anything, they release them one at a time. Mm -hmm. They keep you interested. They keep you in thing. Whereas, you know, a lot of other streaming services dump the entire episode, which is cool too, but it's not an event. So hopefully Perry Mason, it's, there's going to be eight episodes of it. Um, they say it's a limited series. Maybe if it's wildly successful, they'll do more. I don't know. Um, but it, it was really good. I, uh, if you have HBO, I would dial it up and, and, uh, and watch it. Sounds great. Sounds great. Yep. Well, that's all I got. How about you? You got anything else? That's What's for next, I have a couple What's for next week? Next week, but I won't, I won't tip my hand yet. Okay. All right. Well, you're a good poker player. I'm not, I'm not putting my money on my table with you. I'm not playing with you. Thanks. You're, too good for me. you're a good bluffer. I would just think, you know, oh, she's got prepare twos. That's usually what I have. So. <laughs> but I'd fold. Anyway. All right. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Linda, thank you. Thank you. Oh, I don't know where the button is. Oh, there's the button. There's the button. Thanks, folks. We'll see you later.